If we check ourselves out regarding this matter of of tzipisli Yeshua, anticipating the redemption, nira shirachokim anu miod minamuna begula asid that we are very distant from having any real faith in the future redemption, even though we're supposed to. The smak said it's part of the mitzvah the raisa of onu cheshem elokecha. Right, that I took it of Mitzrayim, yet to believe in the in the the final redemption, have a moon in that. But he says that we're not doing such a good job with that. Right, regarding the matters in terms of the first part we spoke about that Hakadosh Baruch Hu made everything, the whole world, the universe, everything, and he's mashgiach over it, and he runs the entire show of my sabreshis. From time to time, we speak about these things. You know, people get up and give a drush about how Hashem runs the world, and everything's a and you have to have a moon and the whole thing like that. But when it comes to to Mashiach and to Chesemesim and Inyanim to do with the future after Gul and Gul itself, he says that we don't speak about Bechlal at all. It's, it's even as if we're embarrassed to speak about these things. I once spoke you know, on a, on a, you know, in the Chutzlart on a trip. It was still early back in the uh, I think late 90s or early 2000s, like that. And I was writing about it, already into this whole material and talking about these things and writing about these things. And you know, it was my partial sheets and different things like that. And uh, I went to speak at a shul somewhere, and I wasn't going to talk about it per se, but uh, the person came over to me and said to me, he said, you know, I realize you like talking about things to do with redemption yeah. and all that. He said, would you mind not mentioning that here at the shul? <laughs> like, it's not going to go over so well with the people. So, I, you know, I was taken aback by that. I thought to myself, I was personally offended, not personally offended like I was, but I was offended on behalf of Gula. What do you mean? This is this is what we're supposed to be talking about. This is how you make the mitzvah, see peace to Yeshua. But people weren't ready for this action. It was before the Twin Towers. It was different. It was different after the Twin Towers. It was a huge difference, huge difference. Because after the Twin Towers, when I went to go speak, then people said, you know, Duff, would you mind speaking about these things? So you see how Ashkach Apatis works. You know, obviously it's a big, a big topic about how this fits in, such a terrible disaster. But unfortunately, that's the way it works in Jewish history. We, it takes a huge wake-up call to change the course of events, the, um, the mindset of people. And it did, very much so. Right? It's even by us as if we gave up on the whole thing. We don't really anticipate and believe in it anymore. Gula. Gula. He said, but the words of the smak, of the Sefer Mr. Zakatan, which we spoke about, right? He said, they should arouse a fear in our hearts. Because since the, the mitzvah of Geula and Tzipiz Lishu is a chalik, it's a portion of the mitzvah, the first of the Ten Commandments, it's a, a one of the main ikarim of all Jewish belief in Amuna and who we are as a nation, since this mitzvah of anticipating redemption, not giving up on it and, and, and preparing for it and thinking about it, is part of this mitzvah, that should shake us up. That should make us nervous. And therefore, anybody who's not osik in the matter of Geula, he says, is very distant from having any real Amuna. That's that's a very heavy statement. Okay. The truth is, even without the words of the smak, without the smak, even you don't have to even look at what he said at this pop, at this moment in time. You can actually just look at the the yud gimel ikarim, the thirteen principles of faith, which you're supposed to be saying every day after davening, you know, and uh, at least not the bal peh. And anybody who's missing any of these principles, you know, what hope does he have to be successful in any avoda, spiritual avoda, of Baruch Hu? 
So it says, Ba Chavok Vem Vamidim Alechas Tzadik Bemunaso Yichia. The Gemara Makis says that Rabbi the Malik was able to take all the Torah mitzvahs and principles and reduce them down to, I think it's 11 or, you know, mitzvahs, and another Navi came along and reduced it down to a few less. Out of you know, 650? Yeah, certain basic principles, certain main, that the whole Torah is based upon. And there's all the mitzvahs. Is that a Gemara? It's a Gemara Makos, yeah. Right? But it's a, it's, a, it's a mitzvah, you know, that specifically, you know, that one concept that's the root of everything else. And then the Gemara says at the end, Chavakuk was able to reduce the entire Torah conceptually down to one concept. And what was that? The Pasik, right? Tzadik the Yichya. At Tzadik, it is a Muna he lives. Now, through his Amuna, Amuna is everything. If you have a Muna, that's what the Torah comes to do. The Torah comes with all the mitzvahs and all the concepts, comes to teach us a Muna, comes to build it within us. You know, I was talking to someone the other day and uh, who was going through a difficult situation. And he, uh, you know, when I asked him how he do, you know, he explained uh, uh, what was going on in his family. And uh, he said to me, you know, not too long ago when this whole thing happened in his family, that a certain person was speaking, uh, Adam Gadda was speaking, and he was emphasizing the need for Muna. You have to have a Muna. Strong your Muna. And he brought examples of, of people from the Holocaust, certain Gadol and Rabbanim who had tremendous Muna in the face of all this terrible tragedy, disaster. And he said he resented this. It's like, you don't just get up at the front of the, the base measures and say, you have to have a muna. I mean, do you know what I'm going through right now? How difficult the situation is? So I said to him, I said, I said the message is true. What he said is 100% true. It's not that that, that you, re, you, re, you resent, because that's what you have to have, and you have to agree. And he said, yeah, 100%. I said, what you resent is the fact that someone says, have a muna as if it's, it's an easy thing to turn on and off just like that. Just... Flick the switch and have it. Have bitachon. Have trust in the Kodesh Baruch to believe in him. But I'm going through a terrible situation. Just have imuna. Have bitachon. That's like telling somebody who says to you, "No, I wish I could bench press 200 pounds. I wish I could just lift a, a 200." I see these guys doing, you know, you know, like this, you know, so strong and powerful. I'd like to do the same thing. See, so tell the guy, "Yeah, well, there's a gym over here. Just go to this gym, walk in the room, pick up 200 pounds, and lift it." <laughs> it doesn't work that way. You can't just bench press 200 pounds. You'll crush your chest. It's going to fall on your chest. You wouldn't get off the bars in the first place anyhow. You have to build up towards it. You just start with, you know, 60, 70, 80, 100, and you keep building the muscles until finally you have the koyach to be able to, to you know, to, to do it properly, right? But uh, it works exactly same with the moon as well. That you have to, in order for a muna to work, you have to build it up. You can't just tell a person you have to have a muna if he doesn't have it. You have to tell him, here are the steps to do this. This is what the Rambam lays out in the mitzvah about loving Kosh Baruch Hu. He says, how do you come to love a Kosh Baruch Hu? He doesn't just say you have to love him. That's what he do. Go inside, take a look at the universe, contemplate his greatness and all the things he's done and how he runs the world and how awesome he is. And he says, if you do all that, you will come to love HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So Rabbi Yaakov Weinberg Tetzal once explained that the Rambam was bothered by a question. The question was, how do you command an emotion? You have to love Hashem. You have to hate Amalek. Who's Amalek? You know, I never met him. You know what? Why should I hate him? You can't command an emotion. Emotions can't be commanded. They're emotional responses to, responses to, to what we understand about somebody or something. So therefore, the Rambam says, the mitzvah to love Hashem is not just to love Hashem. The mitzvah to love Hashem, he says, is to do that which results in Avas Hashem. Get to know Kosh Baruch Hu. It works the exact same way with Bittachon Amuna. You ask a person, you know, do you trust your, trust your spouse? And they say, you know, hopefully the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Right? Would you trust your spouse with your life? And the person says, yeah, I guess so. And your kids? Yeah, for sure. You know, not all kids necessarily, but, you know. <laughs> and you say, you know, would you have trust your future spouse with your life on the first date? No. And they said, no. Second date? No. Third date? No. You know, even after the first year, maybe not. It takes time. It takes time. Why? Because until you oh. know the person really well, what they're like, how they think, and how they respond to crisis situations and the ins and outs of, of their personality, you can't trust them. It's only after you've seen how they perform. Right? If all of a sudden you were somebody who trusts explicitly, you know, and, and, and all of a sudden you get to a situation of panic and this guy goes to pieces... And he's like ready to sell out, you know, you know, the ship. 
because of a situation, then you say to yourself, you know, I'm not so sure I'd rely upon this guy, <laughs> you know, for, for you know, to save my life in a situation like that. Same thing is true. So, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, you might do, for example, is take, make a little diary of all the times that Kush Baruch has saved your life, all the miracles he's done for you. And it goes on and on. Like, the list gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It gets to the point where you become so clear that Kush Baruch is there to save us in history. And that's why Hashem says, Atahar is dust. You were taken out, you were shown to know. I don't expect you to believe me and trust me just like that, but I expect you to go through the process of developing an understanding of who I am so that you know I'm trustworthy. And then once you do that, then trust in me in the end. So that's that's what the point what the person was was making he resents. He was being told how you know you have to have a moon, but he didn't know how to do it. How do I do it? How do I get to that point? The reason why these gadolim, these rebbanim, these rebbis had such a phenomenal amuna in the Holocaust because they built it up for sixty five years. They knew a kodesh baruch Hu so well that when the situation occurred the way it did, it didn't stare their their moon in the end. So that's what he's saying is what well. you, you have to work on it. You have to build it up. It just just happens stumble out of nowhere in the end.